in today's program. Ceramics painting, how ordinary things turn into pieces of art. Kelagai, a traditional Azerbaijani headgear, how to wear it and how it is made. Jewelry box for bride's earrings. Ceramics painting is one of the most creative activities which allow ordinary things acquire a new look, brightness and uniqueness. Расписная плитка, она может уже использоваться как картина, декоративная. Painted tiles can be used as a painting, decorative panel, as a frame for a mirror, as a tabletop, kitchen splash bag, or as any other decorative object. Предметы декоративные all my creative path was connected to the East. I was engaged in oriental dances, I used oriental style both in paintings and in jewelry work, because it's a very beautiful direction, with a rave of colors and bright ornaments. In the Middle Ages, ceramic painting was distributed in Turkestan, Otrar, Samarkand and Bukhara. Here was the root of the Silk Road. There were many craftsmen, artists, who developed this kind of art. That painting technique allows you to achieve a minting effect. The drawing becomes more like an open work. In this case, I need small dots like beads. So we have such a gentle drawing here. Now I can show it in this image. For example, here in the middle you can put this kind of dot. As well as here. Then we stretch them. This is how it's done. My works are like a decorative panel. It's just enough to cover them with varnish. Burning is used mainly for utensils. Medina says, don't be afraid to experiment, mix paints, add some details, or, on the contrary, erase some details, and then everything you've done will look really unique. Kelagai is a traditional Azerbaijani women's headgear. It is considered a symbol of tenderness, and the silk from which this headgear is made of reminds it. At the beginning of the last century, Kilagai was an integral part of the wardrobe. Women simply did not go outside without it, and it was later included in the list of the UNESCO's cultural heritage. The secrets of Kilagai's manufacture are passed on from generation to generation. Amiraslan Kemilov has been engaged in this craft for more than a decade. This Kilagai manufacturing workshop was opened in 1969. I started working here as a master since I was a kid. I learned the secrets of the craft from my father. It was also my goal to do that. And still I continue the tradition of making Kilagai. Basically, the process is divided into several stages. This includes preparation of silk fabric, pattern, coloring, and drying. Kelagai, the very beginning, is white. It's a raw material for us. The fabric is cut into squares. It is then boiled up in calcine soda. The process lasts about half an hour. The master watches and decides how long it is to boil the silk. 
If you do not boil it up properly, the kilagai can be rough, and if you overcook it, it's too soft and can tear quickly. After boiling, the fabric is washed several times. This is done to ensure that there is no soda left in it. After complete drying, patterns can be applied. First, we put patterns frames. The pattern fluid includes paraffin wax, rosin and solid oil to make it soft. Three hundred grams of solid oil is added to about 10 liters of liquid. After we finish applying the pattern to the fabric, the kilagai is painted. The patterns are set before painting so that the paint does not fill the spaces where the patterns are set. You can make kilagai using several colors. After coloring, it is dried. And then patterns of different colors are set as necessary. You can increase the number of colors to six. Such kilagai are rare. It's a very long process, so craftsmen do not always make such work. I make kilagais from eight colors. No one in Azerbaijan does this. It's my own unique brand. The fabric itself weighs 100 grams. And if to add paints and oily patterns, then its weight sometimes increases to 3 kilograms. After all this, we boil it again at a temperature of 80 degrees using soap. This procedure may be repeated several times until the kelagai is cleaned from impurities. The patterns are applied by special stamps with ornaments in the form of buds, flowers and other patterns. The stamps used to be made of wood before. I have some, they are over 100 years old. They used to be cut by hand. It's not hard to make them now. There are even those that are made from metal, but wood stamps are the best. Back in ancient times, it was thought that the real kilagai should pass through the ring. What's the secret? Kilagai can only be made of true silk. If there are other types of thread in the fabric, then silk thread, the scarf, will not pass through the ring. Because the fabric will be rough and thick. And besides, the paints we use are only for silk. On other types of fabric, the paints will come off. We can paint cotton, wool, synthetic fabrics. If the paint didn't mix, then it's true silk. Therefore, the kilagai easily passes through the ring. You can hurry in this case. Each process must be followed over time. After painting, it is necessary to wait a day for kilagai to dry. Other steps must also be strictly followed, otherwise the paints may mix. The patterns will not look beautiful. We use raspberry, purple and bright green. But the basis of all these colors is a liquid derived from the cooked leaves of the smoke tree. To obtain colors, we mix them in this liquid. It also strengthens paints. 
This killer guy is painted with smoke tree dye. Next, I'll put patterns on it. After that, I will completely paint it green again. Then the green patterns again. Until I reach the required color. It's been 50 years since I have been in this craft. My grandmother, my mother were doing this too. I can recognize our Kela guys among hundreds of such scarves. Each region has its own tradition, and everyone has original patterns and manufacturing techniques. In the old days, mankind invented boxes, chests and jewelry boxes. Their sizes depended on the purpose. Dresses, fabrics and fur usually were kept in large chests. Others were intended for kitchen utensils. And for various decorations, buttons and threads, small jewelry boxes were made. In our program, we will tell you how they are made. We need to create the basis for the jewelry box. We make it out of a cardboard. We take a regular cardboard and use a compass for drawing. To begin, we need to draw a circle of 15 centimeters in diameter. Then we start cutting the fabric. This will be our inner side. We need to connect this fabric and stitch on the sewing machine. This is how we put the cloth on the box. Now we will glue the main fabric to the box with a hot glue. According to historical data, the very first jewelry boxes were found during excavations in ancient Egypt. They were decorated with colorful painting and carving. They were used to store jewelry, fragrances and poisons. Jewelry boxes were extremely popular in the East. In China, for example, the imperial seal was kept in a high-top box generously decorated with precious stones, and the word box comes from the Latin box. We have already prepared the box. Now we're taking a felt. It can be of any thickness. The height of the felt is 6 centimeters. It will be on the outside of the side piece. Then we need to cut out the foam rubber. Foam rubber of 4 cm will be placed in the center. We'll stick it to the felt. The outside foam rubber is 2 cm larger than the central. For saukile, we make it of a cone shape. We look at the front side, so that this part is covered. Then the cone will be covered with cloth. Before we sew it, we take an ornament. It is applied on a glue basis. It needs to be attached here or as you wish. And then we steam it off. And we need to connect the saukile with the cover. Here we connect the seam here, and we insert it here. We make a mark. And we glue saukile using a hot glue. Our jewelry box is ready. 
The rest of the decoration is up to your choice. The decoration of the jewelry box can be quite different. It can be decorated with beads, embroidery or colorful patterns. But the most important thing, it's necessary to remember that these jewelry boxes carry information about an important event in the life of its owner.